Roads, a critical part of our transport system, providing vital links between our communities and the conduit for most of a region's economic and social activity. But roading infrastructure is under pressure from traffic growth, land use change, growing populations, higher level of service expectations, ageing assets, funding constraints and increasing costs. MWH's Economic Network Plan facilitates network investment decisions, enabling solutions that are efficient, affordable, safe, sustain economic activity and meet social needs for current and future generations. The EMP approach was really born out of a need to uh, think differently about the way we prioritise investment in our roading infrastructure. Uh, the drive to do more with less, uh, the shrinking budgets, uh, the need to, to think differently about how we spend our, our roading dollars and our rating dollars. An example of how economic network planning has benefited operations is the Southland District Council, where ENP has been recognised to potentially significantly reduce operating expenditure. There's certainly an uh, increasing community expectation of better services, um, better levels of service really, and so, uh, and there's also a community expectation of decreasing costs, so really we're in a mode of more for less. We've got 5,000 kilometres of road and um, 3,000 unsealed and 2,000 sealed and roughly about 15,000 ratepayers. I guess if we were a business, it would be viewed, viewed as we're overcapitalized. With the pressures in the media, pressures within the community to uh, have better justification for where our money is being spent and where our rates dollars are going, uh, we needed to provide more of a, a visually appealing, uh, more justifiable reason for why we are investing or de-investing in particular roads. I think the community is expecting more transparency. They like to see decisions being made in open and um, understandable manner. The change of thinking from just the cost of a road, the cost of filling a pothole, the cost of clearing a culvert, and adding in the consideration of what value that road has to our community's economy. For me, is all about good data, to be able to make good analysis and make good decisions on the basis of good data, and to display it in a meaningful way that help us make decisions about where to invest in roading. The ability to bring together not just the financial cost of building a road, but bringing in the value of that road to the community from an economic standpoint, from a social standpoint, uh, from environmental considerations and safety considerations. So we're now starting to build a whole of life cost that goes past just the engineering. ENP certainly gives us a way to look at our network that we've never been able to look at it before. I think one of the other key benefits of the EMP approach is the ability to present the outputs in a visually appealing way. The outputs out of it can re be refined down to quite simplistic graphs, for example. Visual maps, such as this one that we actually use now, exhibits the actual um, economic areas of work and what process we're looking for, almost like Google Maps, if you will. And we can actually see where the requests for services are, where the accidents are, where the whole of life cost is, and different perspectives we've not been able to see before, let alone communicate. Depending on the target audience, we can then present these maps to the target audience. We can show in color form what does this particular change mean economically, or what, what can we afford and what's not affordable in different color code aspects of, of, the, of the regions or maps. If you can actually get it down and get it down to a graph and you can show it on the roads of different uh, levels of priorities, that makes decision making a little bit more easily understood and I think adds quite a bit of transparency. So for council, for funding agencies, for our funding partners at NZTA, it's actually a, an excellent tool for communication. Right at the moment, it's been used to help prioritise the next rehabilitation programme for the next year, even, even for the current year. We will refine it over the next few years as well as, as we get down more from perhaps a global network perspective down almost to individual roads. Especially when you're changing levels of service and, and we are looking at some hard decisions around um, maybe reverting some of our sealed roads back to gravel. And we can use ENP to help make those decisions. I think the economic uh, network model would give most councils a more transparent way to look at their roads, a, a different way to look at their roads. There are many other authorities that will have elements that are very similar to South and the tool itself will be able to improve their processes for making decisions around the peculiarities of their district as well.
and I think there will be pressure up and down the country to start thinking of your network in terms of economic outputs that it can create. I think uh, the, the drive to do more with less in local government and central government um, means that we're working hard to find efficiency gains within our council processes, but there's only so much we can gain from uh, trying to be more efficient in the way we are currently doing things. What I think EMP provides is a, a different way of thinking and a different way of finding those savings that may not have been as obvious in prior years in the maintenance budget. ENP is a professional service provided by MWH, an organisation comprising highly experienced and specialist infrastructure experts working with you to optimise outcomes from your roads.